There's one more thing we can do in Flash that uh, can have a really interesting effect. And especially for our polar bear, I might want to use this feature. Because our polar bear comes along and then all of a sudden gets burned alive by the sun. And because it's causing the ice to melt, perhaps our bear would like to jump into this nice, dark, cool cave. So we can have our bear do that. Now, we'll start by clearing our tween and starting over. Then let's put our motion tween back on. And then when the sun comes out, let's imagine our bear is, is really close. And then how much time do you think it would take the bear to jump down? Half a second? So it should be five frames. And then we'll bring our bear down into the nice cool cave. And we'll just have him peeking out there. Now it doesn't look like he's jumping in the cave, it looks like he's jumping in the water, which perhaps we could also do, but I think it'll be a bit more interesting for the cave. And we're going to make a mask, which means we're going to create a window where we see our bear, and if the bear goes outside of this window, we don't see him. We can also make the sun fade in a little bit, because when it just pops out, it's a little bit abrupt. So why don't we put a motion tween on our sun. And I was able to select all the parts of the sun by clicking on the keyframe. And that selected everything. And it all got changed into a symbol. So if we go to our color effect, we're going to choose alpha for our sun. And we'll put our alpha down to zero, which means we don't see it. Then as the sun starts to brighten, what? the bear gets freaked out and jumps down. So maybe about there, we'll change our sun's. And we need to click on the registration point for our sun to bring up our settings here. And then we can bring the alpha all the way up to 100% where we see the sun. And now we can see our sun fades in and the bear starts to go, ah, jump in. So now we're left with our mask. Before we do that, we have to uh, fiddle a little bit. Because we need to move, we're going to move our bear onto its own layer. Because otherwise our mask is going to affect all of the other things that are later on in the layer. So if I click in the bear container, I should be able to move the whole thing up onto its own layer, object 3. And if I make sure I drag straight up, the containers all match up. Then I'm going to click on the new layer button. And this upper layer is going to be for our mask. And we can click in that. And I'm going to put a keyframe over here. So press the full keyframe button to make our container. Click back in it. Let's label that mask. And we can draw our mask. And what that entails is drawing a shape everywhere we want to see the bear. I'm going to use the pen tool for this. It gives us the most versatility, and I'm going to actually zoom in a little bit. Let's zoom in to 200% and come down. So we can see the edge of this front part of the cave, and we're going to trace it. So we don't see the bear anywhere past here. So I'm going to start my shape over here, and it doesn't really matter what the color is, because we're actually not going to see it. Our mask is going to be invisible. And I'm not, I don't need to be super accurate here, but roughly follow the outline. If you wanted to follow a curve, you could click and drag and make a Bezier curve, but that's being pretty nitpicky. And I don't think we're going to see the bear anywhere past here. So I'm just going to do straight lines now. And scroll up to this corner. Scroll up over here, or click over here. And then click down, and, and I know I'm going to close my shape because I get the little circle icon showing up beside my pen. And now we can fill that in. So if we go to the Paint Bucket tool, and we need to make sure that we change our gap size from don't close gaps to we'll just go up and choose large gaps. 
because when we use the pen tool there's sometimes little gaps depending on how sharp the angle is. And now I can pick, it doesn't really matter the color, but I'll fill it in and we can't see the bear, which is okay. It's kind of what we want. Go back to my select tool and up for our mask layer here, I'm going to right click on it and just click on mask. And that does a couple of things. We can see that our layers are kind of joined now. We've got this dotted line in between and uh, and our object 3 layer is indented, so we know that they're combined and they got locked. And our mask that we drew has disappeared. But watch what happens when we animate the bear and he jumps into the cave. Ho oh, ho! Success! And it might be neat at this keyframe if we have him also jump. Oh, he's locked. And we're going to see the uh, shape again. But if we move him over a little bit, like he's jumping away from the sun, because it's so hot, and if we lock this again, we can see him kind of peeking out there. Excellent. So that's animating with a mask, and we can go back to 100% here so we can see the whole stage. Go back to the first frame here and press play. Around 20,000 years ago, Toronto was covered by a huge glacier two kilometers thick. When the glacier melted, it formed... All right. Is that too fast? When if you think that time for movement is too fast, like this bear jumping might be a bit too fast... When the glacier melted, it formed... If you hold down the command key and then click on the property keyframe, we can then drag it. So it's again a two-step process command click to select it and then just you can let go of the command key and then click and drag it. So now we can see if our bear looks a little bit more natural. When the glacier melted. Not that anything in this is natural but I'll go with that. So let's make sure that we of course save. 